Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be taking a look at an old operating system which will be Ubuntu 4.10. This was requested by Anbar48 on my Mac OS X Panther video that I released in October 2015. So Ubuntu 4.10 came out in 2004, so October of 2004, so not quite 12 years but we are getting there. And according to the Ubuntu wiki, Ubuntu 4.10 Warty Warthog was, quote, aimed to be a functional, if not pretty, snapshot of Debian Unstable with a few specific feature goals. Future releases will add more integration, polish, and distribution documentation, unquote. So I am running this inside a VMware workstation. And here you can see some of the specs for the virtual machine. So two gigs of my 16 gigs of RAM, all four of my processor cores are being allocated to the virtual machine. There's a 20 gig virtual disk, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and boot this up, and you'll see that it's not that fast in terms of boot speeds for this particular virtual machine. Other operating systems are a bit faster here. Uh, it could be compatibility issues with the virtual machine drivers and stuff. Although I have installed VMware tools, there, it didn't fully complete the installation but it certainly improved things versus when it wasn't installed. So for the most part, the operating system seems to perform decently once we get through the boot process. So within the next 15 minutes, we should be at the login screen and here we are getting closer to that. There we go. So the username is my name, password is password. And here we are at our desktop and you can hear that very long login sound. Definitely one of the longest ones for, I think, any operating system almost. It's a bit unnecessary. So this is what Ubuntu looked like in 2004. Really basic. I think Windows XP had the upper hand in terms of the UI here. It was a bit more colorful as well. So again, this is the desktop. We have some basic items all over the place. So of course we have date and time up here. Volume adjustment option there. You can right click it, get some other options. Here you can adjust the volume levels for all of your inputs and outputs. This blue icon is for the trash can. So your stuff is gonna go into the waste bucket menu here. We have four virtual desktops to choose from, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. I haven't really used this virtual machine too much other than to get the virtual machine going and to install VMware tools. In the computer menu, we can open up some folders, so our home folder. We can also, I think this supports tabs. No, I'm correct. What I was thinking of was, whoops, terminal, which does let us, nah, I didn't want to go to that one. VM kind of froze there for a second. So yeah, terminal allows you to run multiple tabs. Anyway, let's go back to the computer menu. So again, you can open up some folders. You can go to your desktop preferences, which we do have a number of things to change here if you want to. Let's check out the screensavers. I haven't looked at this yet, but it looks like we have quite a few options to choose from definitely a bunch. Let's go ahead and demo some of these. Let me try and preview it full screen. Not the best performance, but it looks like we have some ants rolling around there. Ant Spotlight, Apple II. Oh, this is neat. Very sluggish full screen in the virtual machine, but in this little preview window, if it would start itself again, much faster. Let's try and run this one. It seems a little bit basic. So that one seems to perform a bit better. Anyway, tons of different screensavers here. So there are those. Also under desktop preferences, we could go ahead and check out some of these sounds that come with Ubuntu. You can hear my iMessages going off in the background. So of course we had that login sound. Let's check out the log out one. Hmm. 
next up, let's see what we can take a look at. System configuration, device manager, networking, screen resolution. We could take a screenshot. And under applications is where all of our good stuff is at. So accessories, we have an archive manager, so zips, tarballs, files like those. Calculator, character map, dictionary, a basic plain text text editor, which is gedit. Under games, we have a number of different games here, including Minesweeper and Blackjack, which looks incredibly simple. It's called Blackjack Vegas Strip. So let's bet everything that we have. I have a balance of 560, so let's... Okay, I guess not. Let's go ahead and deal it. I have a 7, hit me, soft 18, let's hold on to it there. So the house went over 21, so we won all of this, so our balance went up by 500 chips. And I got blackjack, so now we're up to 1800, not too bad. So let's check out another game real quick, so pretty basic version of Minesweeper. I have never looked into how to properly play this game, I usually start with the four corners and just hit random squares and see what they do. So those are our games. Under graphics we have a postscript viewer for fonts, I think, an image viewer, another image viewer, GIMP 2.0, as you can see here. You can get contact sensitive help for most of the GIMP's features by pressing the F1 key at any time. This also works inside the menus. That's fantastic to hear. We have an image scanning program. Under Internet, we have Evolution Mail, Game Internet Messenger, GNOME Meeting, Mozilla Firefox, a terminal server client, and XChat for IRC. Let's go ahead and open up Firefox. I don't, I don't know which version this is. Firefox 0.9.3. Very dated. And if we look at the release date for this, so this is Firefox 0.9.3. And yes, the Internet does work inside of the virtual machine. So 0.9.3 came out, waiting for the URL to load, sure, let's accept it. So here we have the release notes for this. So far not seeing anything about a date, but I imagine it came out in 20, or excuse me, 2004 around the time that this version of Ubuntu came out. Pretty lengthy release notes as well for this particular build. Anyway, actually let's go back to that and see what websites look like and how they render. But first, let me go ahead and try out the virtual desktop. So let me drag this to, no, that doesn't, doesn't work like that, I guess. Not sure, oh, here we go, move to another space. We'll move it to workspace four and you can kind of see the window layout here in the individual virtual desktop icons. So we can switch between them here. Pretty convenient if you do have a ton of windows and you want to keep them sort of separated from other groups of windows. So let's go ahead and open up some, webs some websites, rather. So let's go to ours at gadgetunit.com. Quite slow in general here. There we go. Definitely some rendering issues going on. Let's go to another website, CNET. I can't imagine this one rendering properly whatsoever. And as I mentioned, that's definitely the case. Let's go ahead and visit Microsoft, if I can spell it correctly. Microsoft.com. And apparently this version of Firefox has tabs, so let's also open Apple.com. Microsoft is still trying to load. Apple is still doing nothing. So let's come back to that. We'll go back to Virtual Desktop 1. So that's everything that we have here under Internet Applications. I kind of want to check this out real quick. So the different instant messaging accounts, it supports AIM, ICQ, whatever that is, that IRC, Jabber, MSN Messenger. I didn't know Napster had a messaging platform and of course Yahoo Messenger 
not going to go any further with that. Alt tab brings up the window switcher just like it does in Windows and it actually highlights the border of the window which is kind of neat. Multimedia we have a CD player so advanced. We also have a music player. Welcome to Rhythmbox. It's a GNOME music player that lets you do everything. Play your music files, listen to internet radio, import music from CDs, and much more. That's fantastic. We'll skip this step. And here we are at the media player. Let's see. We also have Sound Juicer CD Ripper. As if media player doesn't do that already, even though it says it does. Looks like this is a bit more straightforward. So you can actually rip CDs into FLAC files, AUG files, MP3s, and WAVs. Of course the MP3 encoder, the, the lame MP3 encoder, I imagine, is what this would use. We also have a sound recorder, Totem Movie Player. That's a very low resolution image, except for the text in the corner. We also have a volume controller. So here you can adjust the volume of all of your inputs and outputs. Let me close all of these windows using Alt F4. There we go. So that's everything under multimedia. Under Office, we have everything from OpenOffice. So we do have a word processor. Very standard word processor here. We also have spreadsheet software. We also have, <clears throat> excuse me, PowerPoint-like software. Doesn't seem to have any existing templates. We also have, eh, I'll just leave it at that for open office. These definitely aren't like they are today. They've definitely moved a long way in terms of open office and more standardized support of word processing documents, presentations, and those types of files. Configuration Editor, we are under System Tools, Floppy Formatter, Network Tools, New Login, Root Terminal, run as a different user, System Log, System Monitor, and of course Terminal. Let's check out the System Monitor to see how advanced this is. So we have all of our running processes, processes here, which tells us how much memory it's using, the process ID. Let's go over to more info. So this is interesting because it tells us if the process is idle and just sort of sitting there in memory not doing anything or if it is actually doing anything. So let's go over to Firefox real quick. Uh, let's accept that certificate. So here's Microsoft.com by the way. Let's quickly go back over to desktop one. And apparently the status did not change. So here's Apple.com. So not good. And the funny part about this is that there are probably a very small amount of people who actually look at these websites using some ancient web browser and they're probably wondering what's going on. To Microsoft's credit, at least this loads images, unlike Apple's website, which just loads the American Red Cross icon. That's literally the only image that I see on the page. So let's just close out of Firefox. Back to the system monitor for a moment. We can view my press processes, whichever ones are active, which are apparently none, and all processes. And according to system monitor, it's only using 152 megs of RAM total. I don't know if that's for the entire operating system or just the processes that are here because there, I imagine there would be some overhead and some other things that the OS has to be using. We have a help application, very basic looking, telling you how to use this. We have an about menu, which tries to go to home.ubuntu.com, which doesn't exist anymore. We can also run an application if you know the direct link to the binary. And I think that about covers it actually. I'm going to take a screenshot real quick. So it just did so and you can save it as a PNG. 
doesn't seem like we have any other formatting options so I'm actually going to save this real quick I totally forgot what directory it saved it in so it's in my home folder so let's close out of these real quick go to my home folder here is a screenshot let's open it inside of the GIMP and we'll check this out real quick so it's kinda like how Photoshop is when you first run it everything is sort of separated from each other everything's not sort of here in its own application frame which is actually what I enable whenever I use or run Photoshop for the first time on a new machine not sure if GIMP has that ability where it just keeps all of these windows inside of one large application frame so we do have a grid we can also snap the layers to that grid so we have some brushes to choose from textures gradients much larger gradient selection than the Photoshop ones by default at least so control plus doesn't seem to zoom in like I thought it would and I think I'm actually just gonna leave it right here I don't really want to use this too much it's just so basic looking and dated looking as well though we did just add a nice little lens flare so we were able to do that so that is it with my look at Ubuntu 6 or excuse me 4.10 circa 2004 if there are any comments questions or feedback about this or anything else feel free to leave everything down below in the comments area and if there are any other old operating systems or maybe just old pieces of software that I can run in a virtual machine if needed feel free to leave those down below in the comments area but that is it with the video so thanks a lot for watching and I'm gonna try and figure out how to shut it down here we go so shut down shut down so again that is it with the video thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all in a couple of days